Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to compare the classic Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Monster Manual written by Gary Gygax himself and first published back in 1977 with its Bizarro World counterpart, the Monster Manuscript published in 1986 by miniature maker Grenadier Models. A big shout out to our buddy Mark for gifting us this RPG curiosity along with a collection of old Grenadier catalogs. So thanks Mark. So the AD&D Monster Manual was the first hardback AD&D book, as I recall, predating both the Player's Handbook and the Dungeon Master's Guide. I had a copy of the very first edition, but it is moldering in a landfill somewhere. So this copy here is actually the third edition of the book, which belonged to my sister, who held on to it. So, thanks, sis. The Monster Manual is, of course, an alphabetical compendium of all the AD&D monsters at the time, with each entry listing that creature's stats, quite often with a cool illustration as well. The Grenadier Models Monster Manuscript, on the other hand, is sort of a cheap knockoff of TSR's Monster Manual, with similar formatting, lower quality artwork, and some hilarious off-brand monster names. So what's the deal with the Monster Manuscript? Well, I am just speculating, but here's what I think. Looking at this 1982 Grenadier Consumer Catalog, the AD&D figures seem to represent a fairly substantial chunk of the company's product line. However, by 1986, a little company called Citadel Miniatures was selling licensed Dungeons & Dragons figures, which makes sense since Games Workshop had been an exclusive European distributor of D&D from 75 to 78 and still had connections with TSR. So it's probably no coincidence that that same year, 1986, Grenadier released its own monster compendium, the Monster Manuscript, an adventurer's guide to fantastic creatures. As the Grenadier Bulletin explains, each of the creatures featured in the Monster Manuscript were to be produced as part of the Monster Manuscript Metal Figure Sets. The 12 sets, key to the alphabet, would be released on a monthly basis, with each set consisting of 8 to 10 metal figures. Here is the Grenadier Models 1987 Photographic Compendium, featuring some of the Monster Manuscript Figure Sets. The 36-page Monster Manuscript itself was free with the purchase of Figure Set Number 1. And here are the actual figures included in the 12 sets, representing every monster in the Monster Manuscript. So it's worth noting that at the time, Grenadier was making figures for a host of other games, including Traveler, Paranoia, and Twilight 2000. They even sold Lord of the Rings miniatures. But it's quite likely that the market for AD&D figures eclipsed all those other games combined, which is why, I suspect, Grenadier engineered a way to sell D&D figures, whether they were officially sanctioned or not. Okay, now that we have some context, just for fun, let's look at some AD&D Monster Manual creature entries alongside their low-budget, off-brand Monster Manuscript counterparts. We'll start with the classic Beholder from the AD&D Monster Manual on the left, and on the right we have a similar-looking, but not quite exactly the same, Floating Eye from the Grenadier Monster Manuscript. While the Beholder's famous eye stocks can cast various spells, the Floating Eye is equipped with a writhing mass of red tentacles that paralyze its victim, and slowly drain the blood from its body. Next we have the AD&D Blink Dog on the left and the somewhat crudely illustrated monster manuscript Blink Dog, B-L-I-N-C, on the right. Outside of the spelling of their names, the differences between these two teleporting canines appears to be pretty minor. For instance, the AD&D Blink Dog is lawful good, while the Grenadier Blink Dog is chaotic good and has a somewhat less vicious bite. The AD&D Intellect Devourer on the left is a predatory creature that feeds off of psychic energy, while the Monster Manuscript's Brain Eater on the right feeds on brain waves, so not the same at all. Plus the Brain Eater has eye stalks and a tail, making it a completely different beastie. Here we have the infamous AD&D Carrion Crawler on the left and the Monster Manuscript Carrion Creeper on the right. One resembles a segmented caterpillar, while the other looks more like a centipede. Both have facial tentacles that cause paralysis, however, and they both love carrion. So I suppose you can't really trademark a Germanic creature of folklore, so both the Monster Manual and the Monster Manuscript have free reign to include kobolds. However, I personally prefer the more reptilian AD&D version on the left, since those are some of the first D&D figures I ever purchased. Here is the famous and ever-popular AD&D Owlbear on the left, next to the admittedly more avian-looking Grenadier Owlbeast on the right. Though actually I think the owl beast looks more like an owl wearing a fur parka than some sort of owl bear hybrid. Both the owl creatures however would like nothing more than to give you a big hug. And finally we have the Monster Manual's Rust Monster on the left and the Monster Manuscript's Ruster Beast on the right. 
Not much to say about these two really, other than the AD&D Rust Monster looks perky and spry, while the Grenadier Rust Beast appears to be dragging a bit. Maybe he needs some more iron in his diet. Okay folks, that is a sampling of creatures from Grenadier Models Monster Manuscript, a strange RPG artifact from the roaring 1980s. Please let me know what you think about all this in the comment section. I'm curious to read your reactions. Thanks very much for stopping by today. I hope wherever you are, the kabolds are under control. Stay frosty, and we'll see you next time.